also in front of us is the Sony PVM-20L5A. It's a fairly high-end bit of kit that we've got here. Manufactured around the year 2002. This particular specimen is in very good condition. I'll tell you some of the specs of it right now. Uh, it uh, has 800 TV lines in 4.3 and 600 in widescreen 16 by 9 has NTSC and PAL playback. It's a uh, multi volty 100 volts to 240 volts, so you should be able to use it around the world on the various power supplies. It supports composite video, S-video, RGB, component and component values. There's 480p, 720p, 1080i. So it has even more at 576p and a few others. So it's, it has quite a few different types of signals that it accepts. So we'll have a little tour of it on the outside. Right now, we've got running a demo from Panasonic. This is running at 1080i from a little media box there, a little Western digital media box hooked up via component into the monitor. And it looks wonderful. It's really high quality. So here at the front of the monitor, I should say it's 20 inches in size, there are illuminated buttons. Uh, there's a column on each side with various control options, so there's power on and off, volume, it does have speakers in the monitor. Contrast, phase, chroma, brightness, menu, up, down, enter, sorry if the camera straight off there, but again there's even more, you can select your input, line A, line B, RGB, option A, option B, external sync, under scan, and various others. Uh, as I said, it is in very good condition, it's come out of a come out of a place where it was just situated permanently, it wasn't carted around and, and thrown in vehicles and set up at various places, so it is in top, top nick. There's your badge on the back, model number, the A on the end represents an Australian version, Australian model. So there again, 100 to 240 volts. Down the bottom here you have your various inputs, they're permanent, they're built into the monitor, whereas here on the side there is a couple of expansion ports for cards that's got a digital input of some sort in there so we won't be using that IEC power connection there there's line A with S video in and out and composite in and out via B and C and audio as well there's line B we've got a composite plugged into that there is your inputs for RGB and component and in and an out external sync, uh, audio in via RCAs and there is option there to connect with a remote, a hardwired remote to control the monitor. I think next we'll do a little unscrew job and take, take some of the back cover off to look in at the tube itself. Got some of the back cover off to have a look inside here. I've got a torch, that, a magnetic torch that is clinging onto the shielding to give me a bit more light. So we've actually got a date of manufacture there. Let it get into focus. So it was built in May of 2002. So that confirms our date. And you can also see the AU1 there at the end, definitely for Australia. And it's um, batch number, lot number there with the two and many zeros followed by the one. Could have been the first off the line of a new, a new batch. Perhaps the first Aussie one, who really knows. Um, it's the uh, same old affair inside here. This is Sony quality with stuff going everywhere, left, right, and center. The one thing I do want to point out is that it has a speaker. It might be very hard to see. The speaker is actually at the bottom of the set. It's it's actually pointing downwards. It's at the bottom, mounted on the bottom, pointing downwards. So you're going to get sound coming out of the very bottom of this unit, which is a little unusual, but it's handy that it does have the speaker. Uh, not too dusty inside, pretty clean. So I think now we'll actually turn it on and get a good look at it because it is a quality piece of kit and that's what we really want to see with this thing. So now the Sega Nomad is hooked into the Sony. Uh, this Nomad does suffer a little bit from jail bars, but it still, still looks like a marvellous picture as it is. Uh, so it's NTSC, obviously, as the Nomad only came out in the US of A, and it's not a modified one. So we've got 240p operating, 
and it looks fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to show you some more things to, to help um, demonstrate what the monitor is capable of displaying, particularly with the component aspect of it. It's very rare to get a monitor or a TV that can display both RGB and component correctly. Uh, you get some European SCART televisions that are 100 hertz that do both RGB and component, but it's compromised by the 100 hertz. You don't get the best of both worlds at all. But whereas with a monitor like this, it's um, pure unadulterated signal going in and coming out in the display. No lag or anything like that. I shouldn't forget to point out too that the monitor has quite the extensive on-screen menu which is controlled here by these buttons on the side as I showed you before. You can actually turn the illumination of the buttons off. That way it doesn't interfere with anything. You're not concentrating on them when you're playing a game or whatever. Now if you want to get into the service menu on this thing, so you've got no on-screen display up, what you need to do is press menu and then press enter and degauss at the same time and that enables you to get into the service menu as such and to exit out you also push degauss and enter at the same time and then you're back out just like that. Um, you could probably have quite the play in the menus in these things because they are very extensive and you'll be able to tweak things just to how you want it. Right, I also got a grid pattern up with the Mega Drive there. You can see it's very tidy pattern indeed. Uh, I don't think it's at the BVM level. It is after all only a PVM, but it's still still very good. Um, it's all fitting in there pretty well, and it's pretty square and very clear. But we'll move on now. We'll just do a quick demonstration of what else it can do. I'll just go like 480p and 720p and 1080i uh, just to show you that that works and then we'll probably finish off there. So the media player is now set at 480p with a 60hz refresh rate and you can verify that here in the menu screen. You can see that the format is in component video 480 at 60 fields per second progressive scan. Now we'll put it up to 720p. Now we've switched it to 720p at 60 hertz refresh rate. The monitor at these resolutions goes into widescreen mode, so you're not going to get you're going to get the letterboxes at the top and the bottom. That's perfectly normal. That's just the way it is. Next we'll do 1080i, but I'll just confirm that we are at 720p there. 720p, and now we'll go to 1080i. So now we're in 1080i at 50Hz. As you can see, component 1080-50i. I've shown you the diverse signals that the thing can take. So it takes composite S-video RGB and component. Component at 480i, 720p and 1080i. Very diverse range that it accepts. I think the only way you could actually top this monitor would be to get a Sony BVM, which is the next level up. But as it is, this is a superb monitor that will give you excellent image for your old school video games. Ideal for using RGB from SNES, Mega Drive, Saturn and PlayStation and so forth. So get out there and hunt for one. You will not regret it. Anyhow, thanks for watching and uh, I'll have some more stuff, probably some more Sony monitors for you to look at in the future. Thank you, bye.